Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. You know it's odd that an album bomb week is what I can say feels like a nice cool down, but that is what we have here. Yeah, there's a posthumous pop smoke project that impacted the charts, but nowhere near as big as Shoot for the Stars was last year, which allows for a little bit of an equilibrium to set in, at least for a short time, except for our top 10. And we're our new number one, I gotta say it, it's just outright funny at this point. Butter by BTS. Seems like the fanbase chose to redirect the majority of their sales efforts towards this song with the reasonable and likely correct assumption that it would have the best chance of holding up despite the stagnant radio and limp streaming. So you know what? Congratulations. Congratulations spending money for another week enriching a complacent record label in Colombia, buying the same copy of a song thanks to breaking ISRC rules so you can make the Billboard charts look like an absolute joke for anyone who is paying attention, which paradoxically devalues the accomplishment that you're trying to pursue. Well done. But where things get a little bit more interesting will likely come next week. Because Lil Nas X has pulled out all the stops for Industry Baby with Jack Harlow. And Lil Nas X also happens to be on Columbia the very label with whom BTS has a distribution deal. Now, Industry Baby's not guaranteed the number one by any stretch, especially with radio kind of sluggish to get on board, but now we have one of Columbia's flagship artists competing against an act where the label has invested a fair bit less time and effort, because, again, with BTS, it's just a distribution deal. The stands put in all the work. That was the point. But keep in mind, Little Laws X has worked all these tricks before BTS did for Old Town Road back in 20. 2019. So if it's at all close and a certain fan base chooses some, let's say, counterproductive tactics, like harassing journalists and critics who report on it, hi, or targeting the CEO of Columbia for showing support to Lil Nas X, as if pissing off the record exec tied to the label of your favorite act is a galaxy brain move to get more promo. Well, it'll certainly be interesting, because if Butter still winds up at number one, winding on some increasingly shaky international fundraising for domestic purchase of a song, which I can make a parallel to the layering and integration most commonly seen in money laundering. I work in finance for my main full-time job, Move Moving funds from outside the system inside to appear legitimate, I've seen this, but you honestly think Lil Nas X won't expose some of this to the broader public than just beyond the chart nerds with who he is? I mean, Columbia's already made their profit. They all appear benevolent supporting Lil Nas X if he speaks out. Nearly every other label has been mostly quiet about this, but they've been looking for excuses to pounce. And if a well-liked industry figure rips down the veneer, exposes everything, especially as Billboard remains either hapless or willfully broken, and a bunch of us would have seen this coming. We're just gonna pick up the popcorn. Now, all that's a fun hypothetical for next week, but it leaves Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo once again stranded at number two. And while this song is pretty strong in all channels, I'm not sure there's gonna be enough of a move to take the number one again. I keep forgetting that she debuted at number one this year with this song. I don't know why. Then there's Levitating by Dua Lipa featuring DaBaby up at number three. It rules the radio and actually got a bit of a streaming bump this week. Followed by Stay by Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber at number four which is currently racing up the radio to compensate for dipping on sales even as it rules streaming. If there's another song that could really challenge for number one in future weeks, it would be this one. Now that's Strand's Kiss Me More by Doja Cat featuring SZA at number five, where its weaker sales drag it back from getting any higher despite having consistently strong streaming and radio, and yet it held up over Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran still at number six. This one kind of mystifies me as it's got traction in every channel, just not really enough to make a move. Then there's Permission to Dance by BTS falling off the number one to number seven. Again, all this really has is sales, but with the fans redoubling their effort behind Butter, I'm frankly surprised this got as much as it did. But it did hold up over Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X at number eight, where the sales might have tanked and the radio has peaked, but it's got just enough inertia to hold on. Then we got Deja Vu by Olivia Rodrigo picking up to number nine as its radio is shockingly stable, but that's more because Save Your Tears by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande, it's on its way out naturally at number 10, so 
yeah, no surprises there. I've been predicting that for weeks. Next up are losers and dropouts. Not really much in the latter category, with Calling My Phone by Lil TJ and Black comfortably getting its year end list spot, while Breaking Up Was Easy in the 90s just falling short. Hey, I like good news, especially if it involves Sam Hunt leaving the Hot 100. And our losers are an interesting spread here, too. First, let's talk about the continued collapse for Red Light, Green Light by DaBaby at 79 well deserved along with build a bitch by bella porch at 96 and unfortunately what's your name by tyler the creator featuring young boy never broke again and ty doll sign at 91. then we have the losses off the debuts from last week motley crew by post malone broke down at 23 whole lot of money by bia featuring Nicki minaj at 30. memory by kane brown and black bear slid down to 70. i thought this would have more momentum and nda by billy eilish hit 75. a darkroom interscope you can start working a single anytime now the album is not that far away from dropping but then we had a few olivia rodrigo slips like jealousy jealousy at 99 brutal at 88 and favorite crime at 68 but for the rest Torculator by City Girls just cannot get traction at 94. Same for Straightenin' by Migos at 72. Ski by Young Thug and Gunna looks to be fading naturally at 74. That lasted way longer than I thought it would. And Wants and Needs by Drake featuring Lil Baby hit 47, as it's probably going to land its year-end list spot with a departure in the next week or two. Then we got our returns and our gains. I'm going to skim past Am I the Only One by Aaron Lewis riding its sales to claw itself back to 93. Sales is the only channel where it's got any traction just relax it's gonna be gone again soon but we only got two gains this week the first is need to know by doja cat up big to 46 thanks to a considerable streaming push and waves by luke bryan at 61 which is quietly building up quite the summer nashville radio run which seems to be a pretty regular occurrence for him at this point it happened with one margarita this, this last year now what's more interesting is the entire pop smoke album bomb fell below the top 40 which hopefully is a sign that the label is considered stop with these posthumous pushes that feel so damn cynical so for the songs that are not among the best nor the worst 30 with busy banks at 97 demeanor with dua leap at 86 i mean the hook is awful and pop smoke doesn't really fit at all but dua leap on the verse really does kind of save it manslaughter with rick ross and the dream at 82 more time at 80 woo baby with chris brown at 64 and about a million with 21 savage and 42 doug at 54 Side note, 21 Savage, he could easily do drill if he wanted to. He's got the control and tightness in his delivery to pull it off. I was kind of impressed. But now on to our shorter list of new arrivals. Number 89, Love Again by Dua Lipa. Used to be afraid of love and what it might do. But goddamn, you got me in love again. I mean, it took it long enough. So, at this point, if you've been following any of my Dua Lipa content since I reviewed Future Nostalgia, this was exactly the sort of song I wanted them to push, not as a first single, but easily a second or third from the album. The fact it's being dropped this late in its run, kind of disappointing. Mostly because I think this song is excellent, with an elegant grandeur, with the strings clashing off that White Town sample, playing into these whirling minor tones and a razor-tight groove, especially in the percussion. And I I really like how Dua Lipa sells the song. The tired exasperation at feeling like she was past this relationship, but there's still enough of her that's bought in, and you know what? God damn it. If that's gonna be the case, she's gonna go in full throttle. This is a terrific, extremely well-structured pop song with incredible atmosphere and some of the best production she has ever had in this lane. And while even with the radio it's already gotten, I don't really have any expectations it's gonna do well this late in the album run. I just kind of hope it does. Number 87, 2055 by Sleepy Stop Hollow. It's 2055. She said, boy, you nice. Boy, you nice. Heart cold like some water and some ice. I'll be honest, I'm kind of shocked that of all the one and done trap acts I've seen in the Hot 100, it's Sleepy Hollow following up his deep end freestyle last year with a second song. And honestly, this isn't too bad. Yeah, the guitar loop pair with the leaden, overweight percussion is pretty bog standard by now, but it's actually a little bit better mixed than I was expecting, especially with how heavy that bass is. And Sleepy Hollow's deeper vocal timbre does stick out enough off a pretty decent hook. And while the content can feel pretty bog standard too, girls, guns, drug abuse, you know the picture, the mood of the song is just the same sort of tired and exasperated feel, looking for escape and not really finding it. He just wants to have fun. I get why this got a snippet of virality on TikTok. So while I'm not going to say this is great or even that it's going to last, 
I don't think this is bad. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. Number 71, Mr. Jones by Pop Smoke featuring Future. She said she wanna be about 10 now. I'm like, yeah, it's ain't fat enough. Before you get that, you better go get a tummy tuck. You know, there's a part of me that wants to be charitable here with Pop Smoke, but in the attempts to recast his sound as that of the next 50 Cent, it reminds me entirely too much of where 50's material turned to crap in the mid-2000s, especially when it had to be around women. So naturally, this song has to include Future for a bunch of boring brand name porn, but it's Pop Smoke that kind of kills the song for me. He sounds half asleep against the trap beat and the weedy sample that's fidgeting behind the mix. It's not a great compliment to his flow, and while the production might have texture, it's nowhere near as opulent as Future seems to think it is. But again, the problem is the content on that hook. Pop Smoke leaves this Atlanta strip club and tells a girl that she can't be a bartender because her ass isn't fat enough and she needs to get a tummy tuck as well. Oh, and also if you want any money, you gotta go fuck all of his friends. No matter how much it hurts, and you shouldn't complain about it hurting because cash is what is really important here. I don't know, it just feels really mushy and gross. In a way that's not even all that interesting because Future does this all the goddamn time. It's so tedious and disgusting at the same time. The sort of song that only exists to get a name feature on the album. And for taking this title, I think Counting Crows deserves an apology. Number 50, Holy Smokes by Trippy Red featuring Lil Uzi Vert. You know these took me a while just to damn run it up. Multi-millions, I feel a hundred up. All this cash on me, but I still can't buy love. You know, after Neon Shark, there was a part of me that wanted to at least try and root for Trippy Red, find something that sticks with me, even if he's inconsistent as all hell. And yet after Miss the Rage and now this, I find myself thoroughly regretting that attempt and what frustrates me we got to start with the production again why are we getting a set of synthesizers imported from the mid 2000s and yet with none of the blending and atmosphere that trippy red actually used to be good at paired with a clunky stuttering bass line that forms this really weird pocket with the hi-hats that neither trippy red nor Lil uzi vert sound all that good against i mean i get the brighter attempt at a melody or a colorful groove but the cheap sugary presentation also places trippy and uzi right at the front of the mix where you can tell they're struggling to find a way to ride this beat. Trippy Red especially as he tries to flex and threaten his enemies and he just sounds awkward. Uzi you can tell is a bit more comfortable but he still sounds really guttural and he opens up his verse saying that he fucked your girl and her friend in front of her. Am I the only one who just finds it kind of passe at, his, at this point for him to go to that again? The whole screwing your girl thing it was played out when I turned it into a meme and Lil Uzi Bird is just not in interesting enough when he does it anymore. So yeah, I get why to some this might work on the level of it slaps, get over it, especially with that bass line. But for me, it just feels really incompetently structured and clunky. To me, it's another misfire, a dud. Number 49, Tell the Vision by Pop Smoke featuring Kanye West and Pusha T. Nigga, we made it. Thank God that I made it. Nigga, we made it, we made it. Look, my mom made it. Look. All right, let's make this clear. Kanye is more name and squawking ad-libs attached to this song than actually having contributed all that much, even despite whatever Donda connection might exist. My guess is that he probably helped bring in the gospel samples that crop up around the swampy drill guitar, the shuddering percussion, and the thunderclaps, which do serve as some nice contrast to exactly the sort of production that works for Pop Smoke. Even as the most he really does here is flex about his come up and the steaks that he can now eat alongside the expected gunplay. But hey, that's really all he's called upon to do. But I'll be honest, the reason this song really swings around for me into actual quality, Pusha T, whose trademark sneer is so perfect for this sort of percussion that the menace is palpable. Now, I want to say this is Pusha's most lyrical verse. I don't think he's as layered as his best. He's definitely coasting on the atmosphere and anticipation. Although the passing shot at 6'9", that is always welcome. That was kind of short-circuited for me by Pusha T saying that his own album is on the way. But again, that has me thinking that most of these guest stars, they were using this posthumous album from Pop Smoke for more of their own marketing. I don't care if Steven Victor managed both Pop Smoke and You Push. There's a time and place for this, and I'm not sure it's here. That being said, his verse is handily the best part of the song opposite the production, and with that, yeah, you're right, it's good. I'll take it. And finally, number 14, Wild Side by Normani featuring Cardi B. You know, 
know, this many years removed from Fifth Harmony, I'd really like an answer at when RCA was going to start a proper push behind Normani's career, or when she'll ever be allowed to drop a proper debut album, especially as she's had charting singles with real potency the past couple of years, often with collaborators to get her in the top 10, but motivation broke the top 40. It deserved way better promo than RCA was giving it. And while I could rant about this label for a fair bit of time, everything tied to SZA's situation with RCA makes my blood boil. But getting a Cardi B feature for a proper lead-off single for a debut album, it's doing it right. I had expectations for this, and I don't know, I feel I should like this a lot more than I do. This should be better. Don't get me wrong, I think both Normani and Cardi B delivered a lot of sultry, explicit content. Normani isn't trying to oversell her delivery, even with all the ad-libs scattered across the song. She is growing, and Cardi's singing is surprisingly good on the final hook after her raunchy verse. But the guitar melody from the Aaliyah sample is so reserved and hazy behind all the swampy bass and the rattling snares that even for this sort of stripped back sex jam, there could have been a little bit more tune to it. I mean, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but I wish Normani and Cardi had a little more to work with here. Again, this should be better. But yeah, it's a shorter week for once, and the best and the worst, they fall out pretty fast. In the latter category, yeah, Mr. Jones from the late Pop Smoke with Future nabs that. With dishonorable mention going to Holy Smokes by Trippy Red and Lil Uzi Vert, mostly because there is a part of me where it gets where that could work more than Mr. Jones, which is just ugly and gross. But on the flip side, television by Pop Smoke featuring Kanye and Pusha T will get honorable mention, as Love Again by Dua Lipa is easily going to take the top spot. Could have said that for years now. But next week, we gotta see if the industry, baby, is gonna make this interesting. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you.